located in the red hymnal, number 19. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. Thank you. 
thank Maya Skinner for doing such an impressive job in leading us in our statement of faith. I'm not sure if you noticed, but she did it all by memory, so we need to give her a hand. It's now time to collectively recite our units of invocation. It's located on the first page of the bulletin. When you have Located the units of indication, say, Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let us now process in reciting our units of indication. Lord, I thank you for this day. I thank you for the hours that are before me. I thank you for the hours behind me. Forgive me for any hour I have wasted. Bless me in the hours that I still yet. Bless me, keep me, fill me, mold me in your service. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. This is really meaningful contest and uh, perhaps you will read it again this week and process it and apply it appropriately. It's now time for the musical selection by the Gospel Choir. Under the uh, Associate Directorship of Tiffany Willis.
lead vocalist, uh, Mr. Walter Willis. Amen. Amen. And it's certainly an appropriate time to recognize our musicians this morning. We just heard from the Gospel Choir. As I said earlier, Associate Director Tiffany Willis. Remember, starting with piano, uh, Marcus Skinner, <laughs> guitar, Jerome Clark, <laughs> bass, guitar, Abraham Jones, <laughs> percussionist, Jason Johnson, <laughs> and all under the uh, very impressive but demanding leadership of our <laughs> Minister of Music, Mr. Lamar Willis. <laughs> also want to acknowledge uh, our videographers, uh, Melanie Armstrong is handling it for now, and I know Pat Usery is here, and the coordinator in the lock area, Steve Bossett, we want to recognize him as well. And I would be remiss if I did acknowledge our very reliable and outstanding ushers. Yes. So let's give them a hand. As I'm sure you are aware, this is the second Sunday of the Lenten season, a uh, period during which we observe and commemorate uh, Jesus for his passion, his death, and resurrection. It's also a time, in my opinion, that we as Christians should assess our relationship with God and make the modifications to uh, align our actions with His biblical teachings. Amen? Amen. And on a, let's say, secular note, today is International Women's Day. Uh, yes. <laughs> Dedicated to honoring and uh, recognizing uh, women throughout our history and across the globe uh, for their outstanding achievements. And certainly among the women who are assembled in our sanctuary this morning, you are outstanding as well. So give yourselves a good hand. Uh, so speaking of women, our speaker today is Mrs. Evelyn Huston Wright. Who um, is nearing the completion of her theological studies to ultimately earn a degree in divinity. And we're certainly wishing her well. And uh, of course, I cannot wait to hear this sermon as stones could talk. Mm. Interesting. And Evelyn, we're praying that God will embrace you as you share your sermon with the congregation. Uh, it is now time, ladies, my fellow brothers and sisters of Plymouth, to uh, have an overview of our weekly bulletin as well as our official reading. I'll ask Deborah Gasson to join me in the pulpit. You can give Deborah a hand. Amen. 
And you see your family. That's the bottom line. Your family. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Thank you for coming. But well, come, let's just take a moment and greet each other. And let the person next to you know you're glad to see him here in the house of the Lord.
and they will be here. Uh, the director of music uh, at Kentucky State University is Lord, Dr. Laura Hicks, and she is a Detroit native, uh, went to Renaissance High School, a friend of mine, and a, uh, there's many others that will be involved uh, with this program. So please mark up your calendars, uh, 7 p.m. here at the church this Thursday, March 12th, Kentucky State Concert. They're going to have a wonderful um, concert choir. They're going to have a wonderful concert. So see you then. Good morning. Good morning. All right. Um, about two weeks ago, uh, George Coleman stood here and obligated all men into the men's ministry. <laughs> about a week ago, Malcolm Barnes tested Jesus to show that I said it's proficient and he worked. So today I'm here to present the charge. We want you to come out. March 22nd, next week, in the 20 services, 10 15, we'll be downstairs in the Haley Bell Chapel. We want all men, all men of Plymouth, to come and network, fellowship with us. And to give you an idea of where we're going with this, uh, we're going to take a Bible verse, 1 Corinthians 12, um, 4 through 7, which says, There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit is the source of all of them. There are different kinds of service, but we serve the same Lord. God works in different ways, but it's the same God who works in all of us. A spiritual gift is given to each of us so we can help each other. And so we're asking all men to bring us spiritual gifts and services and knowledge and intelligence so we can make this second hundred years of Plymouth just as fabulous as the first. So that's next Sunday, in between services, 1015 in the Haley Bell Chapel. 22nd, what I said, 23rd? Next week, next Sunday. Hey, you from today. Is it two Sundays? You can come next week too, though. We'll be here. We can start early and kind of do it. You know, that'll be a free thing, and then we'll get to the next thing. I'm ready for this to happen. I'm excited and all that good stuff. You know that. All right. March 22nd. Take the hand for your child. Thank you. There's five Sundays in March, so that gets just a slightly confusing, but that's okay. We're going to get it straight. Um, I just want to take a moment to extend condolences to the family of Gloria Cooley uh, in the passing of her mother, Emma Jean Brown, the services with this past Friday. We also want to keep Reverend Hood in our prayers. He is in Florida today officiating the service for Skip Green. Many of you knew him. Uh, he was an active member of Plymouth for a long time and very uh, important in the ministry. He made a lot of contributions, but his service is in Florida, so that is where Reverend Hood is today. Uh, in addition to breakfast, this uh, between services today, I believe there is an announcement in the bulletin that there is also a breakfast next Sunday. Uh, Homer, Homer, Homer Harvey is sponsoring it. And uh, it's in celebration of his mother's birthday, Juanita Harvey. And the $5 proceeds will go toward the men's ministry. Is there something I missed, Walter? Yeah. Oh. oh, Claire. Miss Claire. I'm sorry. Miss Claire. Uh, so we just uh, want you to, you, can, you have breakfast to look forward to today as well as next Sunday. So with that, I will close out the announcements. Remember to pray for the sick and the shut-in as if you are never on the list. And y'all have a blessed Sunday, and we're going to stay awake. Amen. 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 We want to thank Deborah for her role this morning and extending our official greeting to everyone as well as coordinating various announcements made by members of the church. Uh, hopefully, you will be equally responsive to them all. Um, it's now giving time, and uh, just a reminder, it is better to give than to receive, uh, for it's possible to give without loving, but impossible to love without giving. We love the Lord, and now we will have our offertory scripture.
by Maya Sarah.
invite those of you who would like to come to the altar either to stand or kneel to do so at this time. Also would like to inform you that our altar prayer will be rendered this morning by Deborah Gatson. Those 
loved ones, those friends, even those enemies before you, Lord, because you tell us to pray for our enemies. So we present even them to you this morning. Father God, I ask that you would move in our lives so that any work situations that we're going through, any trials and tribulations in the workplace, Lord, that you would show up on our behalf and, and bring us through those trials. Lord, I ask you to bless us in our homes, that we would have genuine shalom, the peace of God, where rule and rest and reign in our homes, that our relationships with our parents, our children, our spouses, and anyone else with whom we share a roof would truly be uh, just blessed and peaceful, and that our relationships and the way we interact would glorify you. Father God, we pray this morning, not just for ourselves, not just for those at the altar and the pew, but Lord, we pray for the world. Father God, we know that there is no hope and no answer apart from Jesus Christ. We know that there's no healing for coronavirus apart from Jesus Christ. And we lift up all those who are affected and potentially affected. Father, we remember our brothers and sisters in Italy and all over the world, or even those in China. Remember the Christians in China who may be afflicted with this. And we are asking that your healing, that healing would rise, uh, Lord, that, that solutions would be found, that people and scientists and doctors would work together to find the answer to this virus. But we thank you, Lord, that it's not going to come by us. We thank you right now that a thousand may fall at our side, ten thousand at our right hand, but it will not come to us. So we thank you right now for delivering us from the fear of it, because sometimes the fear of a thing is worse than the actual thing. So we thank you right now, Father, for your deliverance from fear, not just of coronavirus, but of disease, because Jesus has already gotten us the victory over every disease that can be named. Now, Father God, we just commit these prayers to you. We thank you that you bless us and that you keep us, that you turn your face toward us and that you are gracious to us, that you lift up your countenance upon us and you give us your peace. And we thank you for it in Jesus' precious and holy name. Wonderful. Wonderful. 
my educator. Uh, she has taken a very instrumental role with my ministerial undertakings over the past several months, and we would certainly not want to overlook that. And as the uh, wonderful congregation that you are as Plymouth, I'd like you to stand and uplift Evelyn as she prepares to deliver her sermon. Yes. 
Jesus' death, an event occurred we call the triumphal entry. Jesus was about to enter Jerusalem for the Passover. He asked his disciples to bring him a donkey to ride. Scripture tells us in Luke 19, they brought Jesus the donkey. They threw their cross on the coat, put Jesus on it, then they put down their cloaks and palm leaves like a red carpet on the road. Then the people began shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Amen? Amen. It's not surprising the Pharisees refused to join in the praise session. Instead, they called out, Hey, Jesus, tell those disciples of yours to keep quiet. Jesus quickly replied, I tell you the truth. If they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. I don't know about you, but I don't want the stones to cry out in my place. I don't want to keep silent about God's grace and mercy and the blessings on my life. I want to spread the good news of his sacrifice and saving grace. I want to be a living stone. Brothers and sisters of Christ, Israel is filled with stones. Jesus had a lot of contacts with stones during his earthly life. He walked on them, sat on them, prayed on them, and even bled on them. The disciples were living stones talking about Jesus all through the city of Jerusalem. They talked about his glory. Praise his name. Scripture tells us that the envious Edomites were upset about it. They wanted Jesus to rebuke his disciples, but Jesus refused to tell the disciples to stop spreading the good news. I will take you on a journey today to several places where the stones witness about Jesus. Beginning with the stones in the wilderness of temptation in Matthew 4, 3 to 4. The stones would tell us about his sinless nature. Jesus had been fasting for 40 days and 40 nights. He was hungry. Satan waited until Jesus was physically at his weakest point to hit him with the strongest temptation in his arsenal. Jesus threw at him, if you are the son of God, tell these stones to become great. Jesus was facing a long hike before he could get some food. There wasn't much in the desert but stones, stones, and more stones. The stones saved off of Jesus are probably still there in the desert today. The stones could tell us, the stones could tell us, Jesus answered Satan this way. Man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. When Christ's innocent blood was shed on Calvary, and Satan, Satan and sin was forever defeated. Aren't we happy about that? Yes. Jesus had the power to transform the stones into bread. But Jesus refused to use his power for selfish purposes or to benefit himself. The stones at the marriage of Cain. You know the story. This was Jesus' first miracle. Performed the first miracle that he performed. He turned water into wine. The stones would tell us he's able to meet our needs and make provisions for us. Jesus is worthy of our trust because he is forever in control of 
Jesus will always provide for our needs. He will always be there for us, taking care of us as long as we follow him. Amen? Amen. The songs of the tomb of Lazarus, John 11, 41 through 44, would tell us about his power to raise the physically dead as well as the spiritually dead. Right. He has the power to take life, a life that is ruined by sin, touch it with his grace and make it useful. Jesus has the power to change, to change us. Fourth, the stones in the garden of Gethsemane in Luke 22, 44, would tell us about his agony and how he battled satanic attack more intense than he previously faced in the wilderness of temptation. But he prevailed and he was ultimately victorious. Next, the songs at the garden tomb tell us about his resurrection. Yes, he died, but rose again on the third day. Now he lives forever to make intercession for us. We are blessed that Jesus died on the cross for our sins. We are blessed that he rose from the dead because he lives our lives are tied with Jesus' lives. Therefore, we also live. Finally, the stones on the Mount of Olives tell us about his return and the ascended back to the Father. But he left us with the promise of his soon return. Brothers and sisters, I leave you with this stuff. Stones are silent witnesses of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Stones cannot move, but we can. Let's tell the story of the glorious life, death, resurrection, ascension, and coming again of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let's become living stones. Spread the good news of Jesus Christ telling others about his saving grace. Let's make sure the stones we come into contact with daily will speak about our faithfulness, our compassion, our kindness, and our love for humanity. Let's eat, drink, and digest Jesus. Let's pray daily and be justified in the eyes of God. Let's build a new life in Christ. Let's, con let's connect to one another. Let's be speakers of praise. The Bible says, as members of the church, we are living stones. We have been built together as a temple of God as living stones. We can lift our voices in praise. Let's follow the invitation given in Psalms 95.1. Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout about the rock of our salvation. Let's glorify the Lord in everything we do. The spiritual house is built and designed for God's glory. Amen.
Uh, as I shared, shared earlier, uh, eminently, uh, Emma will learn a degree in divinity. Uh, she has worked very assiduously over the past several months, and uh, we just want to recognize and just to uh, thank her for all that she is doing and will do here at the United Church of Christ. At this time, we are preparing for our invitational hymn, which is Yield Not to Temptation. It's in the Song of Zion Hymn. I think it's like 620. I don't have my vision and answers. So please stand for our invitational.
worshiping with us today. We'll see you next week at 8.30. Thank you.